17. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Verse 20. But Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. Can you say amen? This morning I want to minister for the next few moments on, somebody say forever, Judah. Forever, Judah. Judah being mean to praise, to give praise to God. Now I want to share this with you. In the book of Psalms, the 78th chapter, verse number 68, it says, Instead, he chose the tribe of Judah and Mount Zion, which he loves. Verse 70, he chose David to be his servant and took him from the sheep pens. I want you to understand something right up front, above any and everything. God chose the tribe of Judah above any other tribe. He chose it because he said it, he, uh, which he loves. He loves praise. He loves to be praised. And above all the other, out of the 12 tribes, he picked Judah to be the, to be the number one. And he chose David, I'd be to be his praise and worship leader above any other. So this morning, right off the bat, I want you to notice this, that God, uh, Judah has been chosen. And I want you to know today that God has chosen us, each one of us to be his Judah. Each one of us to be his praise and worship leader. Amen. Because there's a secret in our praise. Now we're going to skip there and go to the book of 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. And I'll begin reading in verse 14. And the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Je uh, Jehazel, son of Zechariah, son of uh, Benaiah, son of uh, Jill, son of... And I'm going to skip the rest of the sons. I know they serve a purpose, but not this morning. A Levite who was a descendant of uh, Asaph. He said, listen... King Jehoshaphat, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by the mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. Today, as I said earlier, we're all facing warfare. We're all facing a battle in our life. And we're wondering, how am I going to fight it? Because we're so used to our carnal nature. If, and we were so used to pulling out our swords and our shields and our, and our armor. And we feel like we've got to deal with this in the flesh. If I don't deal with it in the flesh, it'll never go away. We got our pistols. We got our you know, bazookas. We, we're, we're cocked and loaded because we're going to take whatever's affecting us out. But I want you to know this morning, what you're battling is not going to happen in the flesh. You're not going to overcome it in the flesh. That's why it keeps beating you up. That's why it keeps trying to take you out. And as long as we keep responding in the flesh, we'll keep failing in the flesh. And here, this, this man of God stands up. It wasn't even Jehoshaphat. Somebody under Jehoshaphat. And he said, listen, all of Judah, all of you praisers. And Jerusalem, Jerusalem is simply the region where Judah dwelt. This is what the Lord says, don't be afraid. I want to stop you right there. You need to know that you do not have to fear what you're facing. I don't care if it's your health. I don't care if it's your children. I don't care if it's your finances. I don't care if it's your marriages. I don't care. I don't care what it is. You do not have to fear it. This is a word from God today telling you you don't have to be afraid of this. And he goes on, don't be discouraged by this mighty army. Well, you know what? I, um, appearances can always fool us. What we see is like when immediate, when somebody gets a response on their health and they've been diagnosed with something, we automatically start drawing lines on how much time they got. We automatically start counting out. There's nothing left. It's just it's too big. It's too big of a problem. 
You know, oh man, you just got a bill in the in the in the mail, and it ain't enough money in the checkbook to 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 pay that bill. And you're like, I just I just give up. I, I can't pay it. I can't pay it. I just I'll just roll over and die. I'll just quit. Why? Because everything in front of you, the army, the things that you're facing, seem so much mightier, so much greater, so much bigger. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's just a shadow. That means it's being cast off an image. And a shadow is never as big as what it's being casted from. He said, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. And thy rod and thy staff, they do comfort me. When we get an understanding that God is with us no matter what. That he's right beside us and he's there to help us. We'll understand and we will not ever fear or be discouraged by what the enemy throws our way. And he goes on and he says, For the battle is not yours, but it's God's. When we finally get an understanding, and I can tell you all day that the battle's not yours, Sister Joe. It's not yours. It's not yours. It's not yours. It's going to take a heart illumination. It's going to take a hard illumination. You're going to have your understanding is going to have to be opened up. I don't have to fight this. I don't have to respond to this. Even Jesus, in the book of Isaiah 53, he said that he went before his shear is dumb and he opened not his mouth. When we learn, we, we don't have to respond to this stuff. And I am not subject to the enemy, nor his tricks, nor his his uh, his deploys, nor his uh, trials, nor his tests. I don't have to respond to you, Satan. And he goes on, he says, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. And he says, tomorrow march out against them. I want you to get in front of them, Judah. I want you to get, them, get, get to a place that they can see you. I want you to position yourself. So right here, Judah is commissioned. And we are commissioned today that we do not have to hang our heads or count out or, or go down for the count. March out against the enemy. When the enemy calls you on the carpets, I tell you what, I'll meet you toe-to-toe. I dare you to meet the cancer toe-to-toe. I dare you to meet the divorce toe-to-toe. I dare you to meet your circumstance toe-to-toe today. By the end of this message, I hope you've got an illumination of the Word of God and the power of God's Spirit in your life because you can meet it toe-to-toe and you'll watch what happens. And he goes on. Now, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through, uh, verse number 3 and 4, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. You've got to quit warring with this old man. You're going to have to get him under submission and say, I don't have to fight with this flesh the fight that I have is is going to be through a mighty God and we are mighty in God this morning because we're children of God we have his spirit inside us and the Bible says he's given us a dynamite power a dynamite spirit hallelujah and he goes on he says uh, verse number 17 but you you will not even need to fight take your position Then stand still. Watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. I want to tell you this morning, God's calling us to position. God's calling us to a place of worship. God's calling us to a place of praise. And he said, stand and watch. He said, the reason not stand there and do nothing, that's not what he's saying. We've got that religious mentality, just come in and sit. Don't move. We got spiritual rigor mortis. You know, and we just frozen and stiff. And, you know, if somebody's arm accidentally moves, it ain't because something got a hold of you. You know, what he's saying there is we stand still, get yourself in position so you can see what I'm about to do in your life. And he goes on and says, Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out there tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. He keeps reemphasizing that. Your father, your daddy is with you. And he's, he's telling there, you don't have anything to fear. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed down 
with his face to the ground. And then all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from, from the clans of uh, Korath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Now listen to this. The war hadn't even happened. See, we are programmed, unless it's going our way, unless we know we're winning, I don't do anything. You know, I'm a big sports fanatic. Bishop called me out on the carpet a few weeks ago. I'm guilty. I love sports. It's my pastime. It's my escape. I'm a Bulldog fan. I'm a Falcon fan. I'm a Braves fan. But you know what? On a, bat, on a good day, they can let me down. They already did it this weekend twice. And I've stood there and coached them long. You know, and they've let me down. You know, I hope they win today. But you know what? That's the way we're programmed. You know, I, I'll tell you how cheapskate I am. I, I confess just to Brother Wade. When the, when the Braves, the Falcons, the Bulldogs win, I want my money back. Because I feel like I got cheated. That's how bad I am. No, I'm just having fun. But the point is, we are so conditioned in our flesh. If it isn't going our way, I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to praise you, God, because it ain't happened yet. I haven't seen you move in my life yet. I haven't seen the victory yet, so I'm just going to sit still. I'm going I'm to stand still, God. I'm not going to praise you. And then when you finally move, I'll give you some praise. No, that's not the way the strategy works. See, the enemy knows you're deceived already. See, you took his place. That was the very thing that God loved about Lucifer, is he praised him. He worshipped him. And then when Lucifer elevated himself above God, he struck him like a flashing bolt of lightning to the earth. Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning. And see, what he wants you to do, he wants to take your praise and worship. Well, if I can't get it, nobody else is going to get it. And he wants to discourage you because Satan's got your battle. He's got your number. And if he can get you to sit on this warfare, he can count you down. He can watch for the moment you'll walk out the door. He'll watch for the moment that you quit and give up on your faith. But God's saying, I want you to stand. I want you to fall to worship. I want you to stand to praise because what that is, that's faith. That's faith because you don't know what's going to happen right at the corner, but it's like, uh, amen, the three Hebrew boys. Not only is he able to do it, but he will do it. And I will only worship God. Hallelujah. And he goes on. Amen. So in that passage, Judah is commissioned. Second th- uh, third thing, Judah conquers. Look at verse 20. Early the next morning in the ar- army of Judah, went out into the wilderness of uh, Te- Tekoa. On the way to Jehoph- uh, on the way Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in the prophets, and you will succeed. I want you to take your faith and place it 100% in God. And take it, and what he was saying in the prophets were, because the prophets prophesied. They forespoke. They spoke the things of God in his heart. And God's telling you this morning, you need to put the word, you need to put your faith in the word of the Lord. You need to quit doubting God's word, because the only way you're going to beat this thing is if you've got faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 21, after consulting the leaders of the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love endures forever. They got a revelation of the faithful love of God in their heart. And they developed it into a song. And this morning when we begin to worship God, even right now, in our spirit, if we'll begin to declare that to the word to, to God, that I'm going to worship you. You are faithful, God. You are loving God. And you're going to take care of my needs. And I'm going to beat this thing that is against me. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for His faithful love endures forever. At that, at the moment they begin to sing and give praise, the Lord calls the armies of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. See, this warfare, you cannot see it right now. 
There's a spiritual warfare flying across here. But when you start responding to God and you start in faith worshiping Him and you start in faith praising Him, it looses the anointing of God and it causes the enemies to turn on themselves. Come on. Hallelujah. And he says there, The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they heard finished off the army of Seir, they turned on each other. You want to get the enemy confused in your life? Worship God. Praise God. Because what will happen is where they were at an attack, They'll start turning to each other. I don't know what to do. I I thought I had them convinced. When we get on our feet and we give God praise. Woo! We we need to quit sitting like knots on a log and give God some praise. If you want healing, praise Him. If you want a miracle, praise Him. Woo! My God, I know I got a revelation of this, and God wants to get you some victory. Woo! Hallelujah, this is going to be one of them Sundays. Get ready. I feel the Holy Ghost all in this place. Not because of me, but because of His Word. Woo! Hallelujah. And they turned on each other. So when the armies of Judah arrived at the lookout point in wilderness, there were dead bodies Lying on the ground. If you want to see your circumstances dead, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For as far as they could see, not a single one of the enemy had escaped. I want you to look at the enemy. I want you to close your eyes and say, I'm after you. You will die today. You will not escape from my life. You will die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next thing Judah claims, I want you to look at your neighbor's I'm here to claim it through my praise. Listen to this. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment and clothing and other valuables more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. If you want God to give you something, praise Him. And that's the way we claim our victory. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. But the violent take it by force. You need to look at him and stop back to take what you took from me. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 There's so much this morning the enemy stole from you. You can't even count it. I said you can't even. You're lost track. You're like, I don't even. Oh, I was missing that. I didn't know I lost my mind. Because you think you're functioning normally. No, we need to sound warfare. Satan, wherever you meet me, at the point of attack, I'm going to meet you right there. Because you're mine today. You're mine today. You're mine today. You're mine today. Hallelujah. In closing, verse 26, and on the fourth day, They gathered in the Valley of Blessing. What a place to gather. Now I'm not only in the Valley of the Shadow of Death anymore. I'm in the Valley of Blessing now. Because your praise will get you to your blessing. Hallelujah. And I gathered in the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day. If you want blessing to get on you, it'll be because of this day. Because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It is still called the Valley of Blessing today because God preserved it just for you and I. And then we get our mind made up and we get to deciding to worship and praise God. He'll meet you in the Valley of Blessing. Listen to this. God, not only did He choose Judah, but He chose David. I think it's significant. Why? First Samuel chapter 6, verse 21. David replied to uh, Michelle, I was dancing before the Lord who chose me over your father and his whole family to appoint me ruler over the Lord's people, Israel. 
I will celebrate before the Lord and I will be humble myself even more and humiliate myself. And in the King James it said, I'll be even more vile the next time. And when you make up your mind and you look at the enemy and say, you can make fun of me, you may know where I'm at, but you don't know where I'm headed. And the worship I've got today and the praise I've got today, I'm going to give God more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 150, everybody stand. Woo! I want you to take this place. Today, we sound warfare. Enough's enough. I have had my taste of what the enemy's had to offer this church and you. Enough. I want you to look at the enemy and say, enough. Today, I worship. Today, I praise God. Today, something changes in my life. Hallelujah. Listen to this, one Psalm 150. David says, praise you the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him according to the of His power. Praise Him for the mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him in the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him for the psaltery of heart. Praise Him with the temple of the dead. Praise Him with string instruments and organs. Praise Him with a loud cymbal. Praise Him with a high sounding cymbal. Let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Praise Him. Come on. Praise Him. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a show. We're sounding warfare. I want you to look at the enemy and say, Forever, Judah. Forever I'll praise. Forever I will not be quiet. Woo. Worship the Lord. Let's worship Him this morning. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to God. Give Him praise. 